Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, or maybe you're right in uh, bed trying to get to sleep for the night and you're struggling to sleep and you thought you would just click play. Whatever the reason, whatever the time of day, and wherever you are, hi, I'm Amy Derone, and this is an audio podcast I'm going to lead you through for meditation. I say good morning because it's uh, the morning for me. So I decided to create this meditation because um, meditation is so profound to my life. Meditation done in the quiet of a day, especially before the day has begun and life outside you, all the noise, text messaging, phone calls, etc. starts to you know, come towards you. Um, Meditation, I think, is just one of the most powerful ways to feel like you're um, in the world, but less of it. And what I mean by that is less at the effect of it. Um, So it's an opportunity for you to lay down the tracks to creating your own peace and quiet and in mind and to um, spark some of your own awareness as you go through the day. So you can sit comfortably any way you like. Um, If you are already in bed because it's, you know, 2 a.m. or whatever, I'm not going to tell you to get out of bed. Um, Just sit comfortably. I'm going to sit on my living room carpet. And I'm going to put a pillow under my uh, glutes and my hips. And the reason I do that is simple. It's so that the hips are higher than the knees. Takes strain, compression out of the low back. And then I sit down. So wherever you are, press your seat into your pillow on the floor, your chair, your bed, whatever, but just connect to your seat by pressing down. And you'll notice that the spine will lift gently on its own. A lot of times we're conditioned, sit up straight, sit up straight, and we'll sit up really extremely straight, but if those back muscles aren't muscles we're always using, then it'll be tiresome. So press down instead into your seat, into whatever it is you're seated on. Take your uh, right hand and uh, fingers, and I'm going to have you start this meditation doing something a little bit different and kind of unique, but always a method to my madness. You're going to take your right hand, and you're going to bring it to your upper left chest. And I'd like you to start massaging your own upper left side of your chest with your fingertips. Massage just all around. And don't just like glide around. Like get into your fingertips. Press them into the muscles so that you can feel like, okay, yeah, I do feel that. And if there's any spaces that you feel like, wow, that's kind of sore, then you probably want to gently massage there more, not less, to break up some of that. And then please just take your uh, right hand and soft fist and gently tap the upper left side of your chest. And down across the top of your left shoulder, down your arm, outside of it, down your hand, fingertips, and then go ahead and gently soft fist, very soft fist, pummel the inside of your right palm, or left palm, sorry, and then inside your left arm. So wrist, forearm, all the way up to the bicep, go up and around and down again. And then take your left hand 
And I'd like you to bring the fingertips over to the upper right chest and start massaging it out. Like right now for me, I'm guiding you doing exactly what I'm guiding you to do and nothing else. For me, I'm pressing my right hand on top of my left as I'm massaging out. And I'll explain why you are doing this in a moment. Just humor me, okay? It'll help. Any areas that you feel really sore, or you're like, wow, I had no idea I was that tight there. You wanna work that out a little. And then just take your left hand, soft fist, start tapping. Start pummeling gently <laughs> your upper right chest. At the top of your upper right shoulder, down the outer right arm, fingertips inside the le- uh, right hand. I did that last time too. Palm right into the center of your right, uh, your fist is right in the center of your right palm. Inside the wrist, forearm, up the bicep, up the shoulder, down the outside of the right arm, up. And then taking both hands, soft fists, you can hear it in my voice. I'm gently pounding my upper chest. And so you do have to do this with some kind of impact. It's just so you feel it. You know, it's not like you're barely doing anything. You're doing it enough. It's not so you hurt yourself. It's just so you make an impact, okay? Okay, do me a favor. Breathe in, take your arms straight up in the air. Interlace your fingers right over your head. Press your arms straight. And if you're laying in bed, it just had that visual. If any of you are laying in bed, just go ahead and stretch your arms behind you. So if you have to scoot down on your, in your, on your mattress, do that. If you have to move your butt away from the, into, toward the edge of the seat of the chair, do that. But stretch your arms over your head. Exhale as you lean right. Breathe in with me. To come back up, exhale, lean left. But the exhale, get all that out. Open your mouth, clear it. Now just go ahead, interlace your fingers at your low back. Straighten through your arms. Press your arms away from you. So again, if you have to scoot to the edge of your seat, on the chair, the couch, whatever, Make adjustments in your bed, whatever. You could sit up in your bed for this one, obviously. Pull your chest up through this, like you're pulling it up through the shoulders. Pressing your arms gently away from your low back, away from your glutes. Squeeze your shoulder blades together like crazy, please. And yes, you are still going to meditate. This is your segue into that portal of meditation. Let go of the arms. Now just do this, simple. Take your right hand to your upper left chest and just sweep across it. Again, gently, but enough so you feel it. And sweep down your left arm, down your left hand and fingers. And turn your left hand over, so it's the inside. Sweep down. Now take your left hand to cross your chest. Cross the right side. Down the shoulders, maybe upper back. Sweep off. Your left hand sweeps off the outside of your right hand. Your left hand sweeps the inside of your right hand and fingers down. Now just take your hands together as though you're brushing off uh, your favorite cookie crumbs. Okay. Now do this. Take your fingertips to your head. And just like your favorite shampoo girl at your favorite salon, 
massage out, massage out your scalp, just your fingers, just start going all around. My temples are always beyond tight. It just feels like a lock up there. And it always travels like behind my ears. So wherever you're feeling like, oh yeah, where are my 10 spots in my head? Go there. And if they're really sore, stay there. And I promise you that what you're doing is setting you up for meditation to perhaps feel more possible instead of your I I tried meditation I can't do it it sucks or I suck at it you know we're doing it and it's something totally different massage out your head a lot get some circulation going wherever you're tight wherever your head is like oh Sides of my head are really tense. Back of my neck is super tense. You work these areas so that you get some freedom there. Blood flow there. Circulation there. And you're releasing some of your tension. And doing that is going to make a big difference. So finish yourself out. Very good. And then just please finish out with me by taking some circles of your head. I want your chin down to your chest at first. Interlace your fingers behind your head. Lots of support. And I want you to press like crazy your head into those palms. Your palms. And then I want you to pull your chin up. Up, 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 toward the ceiling. And let your head press back. Your elbows, press them back. Okay. Now take your head over to the right shoulder. And take very small and very slow circle. Wherever you feel like, wow, my neck is really tight there, please let your breath go all the way out right in that space. Then switch so you do it on the left. You're going to counterclockwise. Okay. Come on back up. And one last thing. Take your fingertips behind you. So for me right now, I'm leaning back. My fingers are into my carpet. And you might be leaning. You might be scooting to the edge of that seat of your chair again. Fingertips behind you or couch, whatever, or you're sitting up in bed, fingertips behind you on your, on your mattress. Please, again, push your chest up towards your ceiling. And if your head is comfortable to go back, do it. If it's not, don't. But really think about letting the chest open up. Squeeze your shoulder blades together behind your back. Pull in your belly just to support your spine. And then release, please. (sighs) Okay. Thank you. Why did I have you do all of that? Well, to me, it's very simple. I have been practicing meditation now since uh, 2005 when I found it with my teacher and... It was amazing for me to find meditation and I'm surprised that it that it took (laughs) and that I could latch on to it um, as well as I did. And I've been doing this way, doing it and teaching it the way it was taught to me. And yet it's something happened 
in the last two years of my life that completely railroaded my mind. And there was nothing I could do and there's nothing I could say. It just wasn't okay space, safe space to do that. And my way of meditating wasn't happening. And that was the scariest thing for me because that was such an anchor for me. Yoga and meditation had been such anchors for me and suddenly they weren't working. My mind could not I was really getting more scared and, and overwhelmed. I'm really just frightened sitting still. And it happened in my, for my sleep. It, everything got railroaded. So everything, everything got railroaded. And it affected everything. And yet I also still had to go about life as though everything was fine. And my yoga was too difficult for me to practice simply because all the feelings of everything that was occurring were all just sitting inside me. And to move and to breathe, it felt so vulnerable. And most of the time, I'd just cry and cry on my mat. And it was a very isolating time for me. And one of the gifts about that is that it's created me to do things differently than even all the years I've been trained and all the ways that things were once working for me just fine as they were, meditation included. So what ended up happening was I still had to meditate. I still had to have something that could still be a constant for me when everything was so topsy-turvy and painful. And I realized I couldn't meditate because I could not breathe. So if we say, oh, we're going to meditate. Well, the mind that you have dated all through the day is the mind that's going to show up to meditation. If you are under extreme, extreme stress, then sitting down to meditation is going to feel like, are you fucking kidding me? This is the stupidest thing. (laughs) And this is not working whatsoever. And you can feel like defeated and you can feel like you're failing. You know, some people, they feel that way. I can't do it, therefore something wrong with me. Some people say there's something wrong with it. It's not me. I'm fine. But for me, I couldn't meditate. And I'd been meditating since 2005. So that says something. I was so personally affected by something so enormous. And it was like a weight crushing me, crushing my skull. I used to talk to the few friends I could about it. And I'd say, it feels like I have a chainsaw. You know, this experience is just like a chainsaw in the center of my forehead. And I'm at the grocery store. I'm walking around. I'm I'm working to the best I can, but I'm always with a chainsaw, you know, coming out the side of my head. That's what it felt like for me inside, this, the distress. And it was nothing I could really exhibit on the outside. <laughs> so I couldn't meditate. I couldn't do yoga. I couldn't sleep. I would try to drive and do the things I, and I would, I'd pull it off. Don't ask me how. Um, But I was really struggling. And I would, you know, be somewhere and have to leave and just, I'd be crying and crying and crying. And I had no peace. Let's just leave it like that. No peace at all. If your safety and security feels threatened for any reason, you are not going to have peace. And you can meditate thinking, well, that's how I'm going to get there. But no, it's usually not successful. So what I did was I had to go inward. I had to walk the beach. And then I had to ask myself, what is it? Like, what is it that I can do?
And what I realized that I could do was I could try to relieve tension in my upper chest, my head, my neck for a few minutes prior to meditation because I realized that I was so in distress. It was traumatizing, this experience, and I was so in distress. I was not able to breathe. And I used to fault myself for that. I was like, but I'm the yoga teacher, for God's sakes. (laughs) But God knew what I was going through. And I think that God and I, we try to take my experiences of massive difficulty and try to do something to bring ourselves through, but the best that I can, but also that I share them with others. So a lot of us can't meditate. And it's usually because we can't relax enough in our body. We're so in our heads, you know. And then our breathing is so held. You feel safe to breathe out when you feel safe, correct? Same with me. Same with me. And so when you started to massage out your upper chest and you gave yourself a little head massage, scalp massage, temples, neck, whatever, and you stretched out a tiny bit, perhaps we got you more in your body because we cannot access that deeper connection to the inner quiet, to the inner peace, with if we are just sort of in a pile up in our head, emotionally, in our lives. And if you have stuff going on in your life outside you, then it is a pile up on the inside. And, and that pile up's usually created. It's a response to that. But if we can alleviate some of the inner pile up, whatever it is, and why, for whatever the reasons, circumstances, then we might have a possibility to find inner strength, inner peace, inner calm, inner quiet so you can think straight. All those kind of nuggets, they come from being able to be in your body. But if your stress response is so overwhelmed and raw (laughs) and fried, it's always going to be more in your head than being at ease to be in your body. Okay? Or be in your bed to sleep at night and things like that. That's why I didn't say get out of bed because I know what it is to be laying there and Your mind is just so wrought with something that you're going through in a stressful way in your life. And in the stillness, it sort of provokes those fears, those worries, anxieties, downright panic, things like that. So, there you go. Now you understand why... You just did all of that. I told you, there's always a method to my madness. Let's begin. I keep teaching a guided meditation with the fingertips because it works. And why it worked for me was because I'm kinesthetic. And that meant that I can simply feel my fingertips. And if you're a little more into your body, as opposed to into, you know, into the hamster wheel of... uh, Monkey mind, Metallica concert mind, roller coaster mind, stressful mind, then you're likely to feel your fingertips as well. So you listen to my voice and I'll guide you through the rest. All right? Let's do it. So all 10 of your fingertips are touching. All 10 of your fingertips are. And if you're somebody struggling with a lot of anxiety, 
it's just not comfortable to close your eyes, you don't have to. Make this meditation still be what you can work with and what can work for you. So if we all start together with 10 fingertips touching and you just see your thumb tips touching and you want to feel your thumb tips touching and that's another reason I walked you through all that because to feel you need to be in your body. But if we're too much in our mind, we're so not connected to our body and what we're physically doing. Meditation can be the same. So see if you can drop your gaze down to your thumb tips touching. See your thumb tips gently pressing together. And feel them. That's how our body communicates to us, through feeling. And all the time our head gets in the way. Or somebody else's opinion, or suggestion, or expectation, or demand. Can take us so far away from our own real feelings. Simple feeling. And we can't feel, we shut down. So come back down and feel your thumb tips touching. And please take a breath in with me. More importantly, get the breath out and the way out is through, so get it out. The exhales are how you get back into your body. Like when we exhale fully like that, everything can change. Everything can shift on the inside. Drop your eyes over to your first fingers touching. Physically feel your first fingers touching. This whole body mind connection. Isn't that funny? Like we always say mind body. But to me, if you connect to your body, your mind will feel that. First fingers touching. You'll physically feel your first fingers touching. It might be heat, it might be a pulsation, it might feel like a wave of energy. And that's just a body sensation. Like that's not new age bumper sticker talk. That's, that's real. There's an energy in your fingertips touching. And there is in mine as well. And when you feel your index fingers touching, and you could try it out, you could close your eyes, but it's as if your entire forehead was a giant window and it was pulling your attention, all of your attention into a funnel and right down into your index fingers touching. And you'll feel the physical feeling. Yes, how do I know? Because I feel it. You don't think, are my fingers touching? When you're in your head, you think, you overthink, you overanalyze, you sort out every detail, you exhaust yourself. Trust me, I should know. But when you drop down into your body, isn't it much simpler? How, do I, how does my mind know my index fingers are touching? Because I feel them. <laughs> Physically, I feel it. And that's how you know. When you know, you know. So you get down into your feelings. Which that can be the scariest place, you know? It's so vulnerable. But it's also the birthplace and the pulse and the heartbeat of your intuition. And when you know, you know. And this is a great practice to help you start dropping more into your own intuition. 
The intuition is the feeling, the hunches, the nudges, that quiet voice. But it's felt in the body. It's not in the head. The wisdom in the body tries to get the attention. You know, the wisdom of the heart, the wisdom of the gut tries to get the information to the head. Drop your gaze on your middle fingertips touching. I cannot tell you how many times my intuition that was right all along and I failed it. I failed it because I heard it. I heard it like bells and whistles and, you know, and it was, there was a profound few places in my life. Your middle fingertips are still touching. Keep your gaze on that. There were profound few sacred moments in my life where my intuition and listening and trusting myself would have only made my life a wonder. Like like a Christmas feeling every day. And I didn't listen. I listened, and when I shared what I thought, I felt it was usually ridiculed. It was definitely, you know, oh my God. And it was something to shame me for, condemn me for. And it turned out to be right all along. And the person who lost out royally wasn't the people that I was close to and trusted. And I was so influenced by It was my loss. And some losses you'll go through, you'll never really come to the other side of. Middle fingers touching. So I tell you that because I would like to be a more authentic teacher of telling you, trust yourself. And we are just sorting out all the head chatter and not just your thoughts, but so many others that sort of deposited their their sentences into you and then you think that they're yours. And so we sort some of that stuff out to get back to what's simple, to what your intuition knew all along, middle fingers, all the concentration funneled down into them. So I like the image of a funnel and you take all the energy of mind and you funnel it right into middle fingers touching. See, our intuitive voice is so quiet and the world is loud. And there's a lot of us that feel we should do what somebody close to us says we should or should not do. But our intuition is never wrong. Our gut is never wrong. Unless we start taking action upon what our gut tells us, our intuition tells us, call it what you will, your spidey senses... (laughs) And you'll never get to know. Third finger's touching. Take in a breath. Open your mouth, free and clear it. Every exhale is dropping you more into your own body so that you have your ability to drop Like your mind, your mental energy, drop it like an anchor, funnel it, and drop it like an anchor onto your third finger's touching. Our meditation practice is a practice where we go inward. And that might be the scariest place. 
but it's also the place where all your wisdom is. And you just stop doubting it. And you start listening. You start going, okay, well, right now, I'm feeling my third finger's touching. Now, how would that help me the rest of the day? Or how would that help me if I did this more often? It would help you because you would be accessing feeling. And that's what intuition is. And you would be practicing quieting your mind so you can be more in your body listening to that inner quiet voice, that knowing. And we all have it. There is zero special about me. I'm exactly like you. I've had to do a lot of work to peel back a lot of layers only to get back to the place where I started. Third finger's touching. Funneling all your concentration into your third finger's touching. I feel that the most I can do is share with you a meditation practice, but share to a little bit and peace to how much I've struggled, to how much my mind needs this, to how royally blew up my own life by not trusting my own inner something that I didn't know what it was at the time. I just knew what I felt. And the things that I felt were going to lead me to the best. And then somebody else came in and kind of crashed the (laughs) party. (laughs) And I didn't have the esteem, therefore the guts, to be a stand for my own instinct and my own feeling. And in many ways, in very specific few ways, especially, it has blown up and made my life crash and burn. Drop your gaze onto your pinky fingers touching. And I'd like to offer you something so that maybe it need not be that extreme and heartbreaking for you. So that if you're trained to what you intuitively were always feeling pulled to comes around again, maybe you trust it better this time. Maybe you'll decide, I'm not listening to the person that I've only ever listened to. Giving them all this power. And pretty much canceling out your own inner wisdom that you were born with. That I was born with. And you want to really discern who you're taking guidance from. You really want to run for daylight, I think, from people... That if you know in your heart you're meant to do something, be somewhere, be with somebody, and you just know it, but you're like, I don't even know. I just know I know. And it's, it's, it's unwavering. It's a feeling that never dies down. Even when others try to put out that fire and that passion, your intuition is not against you. Our mind is, or somebody else's opinion, is against the own inner wisdom. That's why we all run around like asking, what do you think I should do? Is this okay? Is this all right? We need to stop doing that. And we need to stop running outside us. And we need to go inside. 
because your intuition is actually your true best friend. And some of our friends aren't really. If you have a friend who does it, who's not happy where they are, maybe it's hard to admit. And they might not never, they might not ever admit it to you, but maybe they don't want to see you happy because they're not happy. Maybe they feel like they can't change their circumstances. Their life is trapped. Their opportunity got forever lost. And it's too painful for them to watch you. You get it? Pinky fingers touching. All ten fingers touching. Draw your breath in. Empty your breath out. When your upper chest is tight, it's usually because we've held our breath. And it might be your posture habits. It's for me also that I do a lot of vinyasa yoga um, for the push-ups and stuff. So my upper chest is strong, but therefore tight. And uh, when we massage your head out, and we kind of dust off energetically the stuff down your arms and across your chest and things like that. You know, it's, we're just creating an opportunity to get closer to yourself instead of all the layers of mind, all the body tension, etc. And if you can breathe a little easier, you're going to be a little calmer. Ten fingers touching. Feel all ten fingers touching. There are some of us that will go through things in this life that are so tragic. Think about if there was somebody that you knew or somebody that you knew of who knew somebody who who died who um, committed suicide and there's some people out there that are saying you know I knew something wasn't right that's the intuition I'm not talking about something that's fairy dust I'm talking about a real live uh, barometer inner GPS, a detector inside you. Or it could be um, you, you have a sense that your kid doesn't feel well at school or is sad at school. Or, you know, you have a sense that you're outgrowing that job, that that relationship didn't serve you, but in a very vulnerable moment you ended up in a relationship that wasn't for your best and you know it's not right for you your intuition is going to constantly keep letting you know that your intuition is going to constantly keep trying to let you know what's right and your intuition is going to constantly keep trying to get you to know always first what is for your highest and best And that voice is simple, but it doesn't mean it's easy. And a lot of us are afraid to act on intuition because it creates change in our life. And we don't want to disappoint anybody. We don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, you know, things like that. But when you don't honor that voice, when you kick it to the curb... You do yourselves no favors. And so our intuition sort of feels kind of like kicked to the curb and kind of abandoned. And so then we're, we struggle to hear it more. And you got you to gotta make room. Ten fingers touching. You make room. So when that inner voice that's always trying to get your attention comes through, maybe in a still moment, you could be driving in your car, you could be walking the beach, you could be 
cleaning your house. You know, just a quiet, quiet moment. And that voice can come through again. And it's not out to harm you. People around you might not like it, but you're going to be a lot fucking happier in the long run, and that is my wish for you. Because there are some moments our intuition gets a hold of us and we don't listen. And it's not because we're jerks. It's because we're not taught to listen. We're taught to run from our feelings. (laughs) We're taught not to feel. Or because you're so locked up in your mind. You can't hear that voice. You can't feel like to save your life. Sometimes your intuition is that which will save your life. And may you practice feeling a little stronger inside and deciding to rise up and claim yourself with a little more sense of self. so that you can take action on it. And may this practice help strengthen you in your mind. Even if it means that you're going against the grain of what other people said or thought you should or should not do. We have to quiet our mind to hear that voice. We have to be in our body to hear that voice. And perhaps when we hear it, perhaps we, we don't just shove it to the side right away. We actually invite it to come closer by staying quiet and listening. Maybe you journal about it, you know, what have you. It will tell you more. And that more is always for your greatest gain. And it wants to speak to you about everything. What you're putting into your body, the kind of sleep you need, what your soul would thrive on for doing for work the person who would be the greatest love of your life, the greatest love story of your life. It would guide you to remember to pick up the toilet paper in the grocery store when you get in there and go, what am I here for again? (laughs) It could guide you to say, talk to that person that day, apply for that job, leave the area completely and move to wherever. Leave that relationship that's abusive and toxic and demeaning to your spirit, to your nervous system. So... May this meditation this morning or evening or middle of the night dial down some of all the hype and get you back to what's real and what's simple and what's pure and genuine because your intuition is really like your your connection to the divine. It's like having your own best friend And it's always been with you. Put it on that channel. And remain there. And watch what can come about. And stop, stop, stop dismissing yourself. Stop dismissing this amazing wisdom that's here for the ride of life to guide you. And get you to the right people and the right places and... Stop acting like that talk is cheap. 
because that's how you cheapen it. So, listen and show gratitude and let the feeling of 10 fingertips touching perhaps be the bridge that gets you to tune back in to your feelings. Not your ego. This is underneath all that. This is under the surface mind. You got to go in a little deeper. I hope you drop in again. Thanks for listening. I had no plan to do any of this or say any of that. I hope it helps. Wherever you are. Namaste.